Okay. Good morning. Guys, we are live. Come join me, please. Get on here. Come on. What a beautiful morning it is. It is 9.48 a.m. This beautiful Friday morning. 14th day of September 2018. Sun is shining. Beautiful blue sky. Temperature is warming up. Morning, Charlotte Westfall. How you doing, my friend? Hi, CJ. How you doing, buddy? Morning, Debbie Howard. How are you? Tell Mike I said hi. Hey, Jim Nelson. Alrighty, guys. Let's go ahead and get started on this um, devotion before we have any interruptions. So, it's because it's been pretty quiet here this morning. So, I hit that live button. You know what that means. Everybody's been coming out of the woodwork now. So, alrighty. We're going to look at another hymn this morning. And i got a few verses of scripture I would like um, to read to you as well. And the title of our devotion and our ten, uh, ten, <laughs> hymn this morning is The Lily of the Valley. You all know that song, don't you? He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. Aren't you glad for that? So anyway, so let's get started. We're going to be looking at um, some scripture in the um, Song of Solomon. And let's start with chapter 2. We're just going to look at one verse in chapter 2 and then we'll jump on to other ones. So Song of Solomon chapter 2, verse 1, it says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. And, you know, for uh, all my Christian life, I guess, I've always just said, He's the lily of the valley. But you know what? This scripture says that he's the lily of the valleys. Plural, more than one. You know, there's more than just one valley of, uh, that we go through in life. And, and he's the lily of everything that we go through. Every valley, every um, sadness, bad times, heartaches. He's the lily there. And um, that tells me that we're never alone no matter what we walk through, I gotta readjust this. The sun is shining through. And Song, um, Song of Solomon, chapter five, verse ten, it says, "My beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand." Psalms twenty-seven, verse four says, "One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life." to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. I read that verse a few times this morning just dwelling on that and, and David and the way he was saying I have the desire of the Lord the one thing that I have more than any other desire and that what I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. How about Psalms 45 verse 2 says, Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore God hath blessed thee forever. And our last batch of scriptures we're going to look at is in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 30 and 31. It says, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And this, all these scriptures will make sense in a moment because the, all these verses are actually referencing this song, The Lily of the Valley. And we know that this song was written by Charles W. Fry in 1881. 
and I won't go into all the history of it, but Charles Fry was um, born over in England. He and his, um, with uh, along with his family, were um, bricklayers by trade. And it says that um, in Charles's um, spare time, he would he had mastered many um, instruments, and that he would play for. Um, the churches. Now what's interesting was back um, in 1881 and just probably around 1879 when the Salvation Army started over there um, a lot of people was against the Salvation Army and Charles's father and Charles and his two brothers had volunteered over at the Salvation Army and they said you know we'll be your bodyguards so therefore they stood at the door and when protesters would come and because there would be people protesting the Salvation Army and the ministry that was started over there and so they became bodyguards for the the ministers and the workers of the Salvation Army and which um, which I found very interesting is they said that after they would take care of the troublemakers and keep them away then in between when they had spare time each one of the brothers included and the dad had played an instrument so they would bring their instruments and that was what they would use as their weapon and you know they would play hymns in between of having to take care of a troublemaker and it says that's where the um, first brass band for the Salvation Army was formed. And I, I thought that was interesting. But Charles had written this song in 1881 after he read the Song of Solomon. And he um, read the love story. And he pictured this love story about Jesus Christ in his own life and how he needed Jesus and how he loved Jesus and wanted Jesus um, as his friend and he wrote this song and then a year later um, it, just after it was published then Charles had died but let's look at there's three verses to this song it's kind of written just a um, little different than most hymns because it has three verses but it also has like three courses to the song ending in the main course and we'll get to that in a moment but let's look in verse 1 of this song the lily of the valley it says I have found a friend in Jesus he's everything to me he's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul the lily of the valley in him alone I see all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole now you understand why I read these scriptures because these verses that um, that Charles had written was from the from Song of Solomon, but these are also his testimony. He read that and he said, "You know what? I have a friend in Jesus, and he's everything to me." And so this song was pretty much his testimony and bragging about Jesus. And I've found a friend in Jesus, and he's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul, the lily of the valley. In him alone I see all I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. The first course says, in sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Verse 2 says, he all my grief has taken and all my sorrow bore. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I have the truck driver walking past, smiling, not me waving. I was wondering what he was doing. Anyway, let me go back to that. <laughs> he was cheesing too. <laughs> anyway, he says, He all my grief has taken, and all my sorrow bore. In temptation he's my strong and mighty tower. I've all for him forsaken, and all my idols torn. I love that from my heart and now he keeps me in his by his power and the second course says through all the world though all the world forsake me and satan tempt me sore through jesus 
I shall safely reach my goal. He's the lily of the valley and the bright morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. And the last verse of this song, and I love this, this is so true, it says, He'll never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here, while I live by faith and do His blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. For His manna, He my hungry soul shall fill. And the third chorus of this song says, Then sweeping up to glory to see His blessed face, where rivers of delight shall ever roll. He's the lily of the valley and the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. And folks, I want you to know, I, when, when I read hymns like this and read the Testament, you know, because these are not just songs that people just want to write down because they think they can sell a million copies. You know, it's not like today's music you know, society and, and the way we view our music and stuff. These songs are written with a purpose and there's they have a testimony, they have a story behind it. You know, and Charles Fry had written this song and he started out by just saying, I found a friend in Jesus. He is everything to me. And he goes on and he teaches or writes down, you know, the in, in temptation. That he's my um, stronghold, my mighty tower. He's never forsaken me, and 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 he's my power. All these words that he's pinned to paper, folks, is because of his personal testimony, his personal story. It says, though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach my goal. I love the third verse. As I already said. Um, he'll never, never leave me, nor forsake me here. Aren't you glad that this world isn't our final home? He'll never leave us for, or forsake us. He'll be right there beside us. He gives us strength, encourages us to move forward. Because one day, this is all going to be behind us. And we're going to face eternity. And I hope you can say Jesus is your friend. Uh, there's a lot of scripture that I was going to give you in reference um, go into John chapter 15. It speaks about you know Jesus being our friend. Um, you can look in the Old Testament and where he talked about Abraham, calling Abraham the friend of God. You know, folks, listen. We can be a friend to Jesus because he's certainly a friend to us. So and that's all I got for you today. Listen, you guys have a blessed weekend. Um, we are. We got a call last night, asked us to come over in um, Garrison, Kentucky um, for Sunday morning and Sunday evening to um, sing and preach um, over at Bible, um, or Christ Open Bible. And um, so we'll be there Sunday, both services, and then next week, um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we'll be preaching on Thursday and singing, and then Friday and Saturday we'll be singing um, over at Madison Free Will Baptist Church um, and part of their revival. And then we'll be back at Christ Open Bible Church next Sunday morning and evening and we'll be ministering and singing there again. So um, we're starting to take more appointments and, and trying to get back into um, our ministry. Like I said, um, Dusty's mom and dad still needs prayer. They're doing somewhat better, but they still are facing um, illnesses and stuff and we're trying to help them and take care of them um, but we want to get back in our ministry as well so we're kind of taking baby steps is what I'm wanting to do but it seems like we're having a full schedule and I love it I love it I love it so listen if you're interested in having us come sing and or and or preach at your church give us a holler um, we'll be happy to come and minister and worship the Lord with y'all so anyway um, if we're able we'll go live um, those services we should be able to um, hopefully, but um, maybe this weekend me and Dusty will find some time and sit down and sing some songs for you. Um, if not, maybe I'll go to the piano and sing a few songs. So anyway, um, guys, have a blessed um, weekend. Please keep um, everybody in prayer um, over South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia area. Um, hurricane's going to reach, looks like, all the way to Knoxville, Tennessee. And then all the rain that's supposed to go up north, which is in our, our neck of the woods, um, just a lot of rain, a lot of um, strong wind already. People are out, of, in their power is out. Um, just a lot of stuff going on. Um, and we know that God's able. 
to uh, you know to take care of them God's able to stop the hurricane but you know what it's called a natural disaster for a reason because God I believe God allows na nature to just run its course I believe he takes he sets things in motion and he lets things happen but God can give them give people safety and protection and that's what we're praying for today so um, let's um, not cease to pray for the people affected on this with this hurricane so anyway i want to jump off here guys have a wonderful weekend love you and lord willing we'll be back on monday with another devotion so um share this video have a great weekend love you guys god bless you